Hi folks, uh, welcome to the second part of this video about the blower fan. I'm going to try and keep this really brief because uh, there is a possibility that the physics could get quite heavy and difficult to understand and I don't really want to get into that just now, mostly because frankly it's not as much fun as just seeing the demonstrations. But what I want to do with the blower fan, which I have taken apart as you can see here, I want to quickly explain the physics behind why this is so different from an axial fan and in one level it's it's quite easy to understand and here's how I'm going to do it. I want you to picture two things. The first thing I want you to picture is a golfer. A golfer swinging a golf club at a golf ball and what happens here is there is a contact that is face on. My hands look really big in the video, I apologise for that. The contact is face on. Now, in mechanical engineering, this is called compressive force, and that's what's happening with this fan. This fan is applying compressive force to the fluid. I was going to talk about axial fans and I completely forgot my analogy, so here is my super helpful analogy. You've considered the golf club and the golfer, this time I want you to consider somebody swinging an axe to chop wood. Now it's a similar motion. Uh, it's a similar utensil in principle, but the force, the mechanical force that's at play is entirely different and it's a lot more akin to what happens with an axial fan. The type of mechanical force that I'm talking about is called a shear force, which is when two parallel bodies move in opposite directions from one another, like this. Now, the fan doesn't actually shear the air, strictly speaking, because the blades are pitched and they're slightly twisted and there's more, like I said, an awful lot more going on there from a, a fluid mechanics standpoint. But in principle, this is much more of a wood chopper than it is a golfer. And in that sense, it interacts with the air in an entirely different way. Here's a quick explanation as to why the blower fan did what it did in the last video. It's difficult to explain, but the behaviour that you saw earlier on is all to do with these two different forces and how the fans work. So the best way to understand it is that the blower fan works hardest when there is nothing blocking the outlet. Now that sounds counterintuitive, it's very, very odd that that might be the case, but that is exactly what's happening. The blower fan is working really, really hard to get all that air through that tiny little gap. As soon as that gap starts to close, the blower doesn't have to work so hard. It's not processing as much air. It's not developing as much air flow, but it is developing more pressure. And when you completely close the outlet, the blower is free to spin really fast with very little power draw because there's no air flow. There's nothing for it to do anymore compared to what it was doing before. It's vastly different from that of a fan because the, sorry, axial fan. The axial fan has to spin at, against the pressure of the enclosure that is pushing against it. This is called back pressure. And that's why axial fans tend not to be used in air conditioning. They're just not good at developing pressure. Now, let's have a look, once I get this thing assembled again, at how it performs in the airflow chamber. Right, so I've got the blower fan ready to go against the air chamber and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show these gauges. Now, by way of explanation, we've been using this gauge until this point because the high resolution is required when it comes to the very weak pressure developed by axial fans. It's a very different story with this blower fan. We need to go to this gauge now. So the first six increments on this gauge are the entirety of this gauge here. So we're not looking at 60 pascals. We won't be looking at 100 or 200 or even 250 pascals. This fan is going to blow the needle right into the rubber stopper at the other end. Let's see that happen. I'm going to power it on first and then I'll put it against the box.
So there you go. Quite a lot of pressure for not a very large fan. Okay, so the last thing really to do with this video is another little demonstration. And you may remember this monster fan from a video that I posted a long, long time ago. This is my Sanace 6000 RPM fan. I have three of them still. This fan, at its top speed of 6000 RPM, develops a similar level of static pressure to the blower we saw. Now, of course, the level of airflow is enormous by comparison. You're talking about just below 40 cubic feet a minute to this thing's 260 cubic feet a minute. But like I said, the static pressure is comparable at those speeds. Now, without further ado, I'm going to just power this up and let's see what happens. So, it's just going to blow absolutely everything off my desk if I keep doing that. You get the picture. So, to wrap up, what can we say? Blower fans are really good at developing high pressure. They're not good for high volume flow unless the fan itself is very large. Axial fans are not good at developing pressure, but they are very good at producing high volumes of airflow, which makes them perfect for use in computers. Anyway, I'll be back again soon with another video. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you again next time.